We're going to introduce quadratic forms and how to write them in matrix notation. Before we look at what a quadratic form is, for contrast, this is what's called a linear form. It's a linear combination of coefficients multiplied by variables with powers of 1. There's no products of variables, and all the variables are to the first power. If there were n variables in the sum, as there are here, we call it a linear form on Rn. Each x is a real valued variable, and they all have coefficients. Then this is what we call a quadratic form. It's a linear combination of two types of terms. We have n variables squared, each with a coefficient, and then we have all of the terms where we have a product of two distinct variables, all terms of the form xi times xj with some coefficient. These are called the cross product terms. And note that each cross product term xi times xj can be combined with the cross product term xj xi. And typically when writing these out, we would combine those so that we can write it in its simplest form. So to start getting more specific, here's a general quadratic form on R squared, where in R squared, so we have two variables, x1 and x2, and the general quadratic form looks like this, a1x1 squared plus a2x2 squared plus the one cross product term 2a3x1, x2, a product of two different variables. Now let's address this two here. The reason there's a two is because in theory, there are two cross product terms, x1, x2, and x2, x1, but then we add them together and get 2a3, x1, x2. But you might say if 2 times a3 is the coefficient of this term, why not just call that whole coefficient a3? Why bother writing the 2? After all, if the coefficient was 8, for example, instead of having 2 times 4, where a3 is 4, why not just say a3 equals 8? The reason will become apparent when we write this in matrix form. In matrix form, it's actually more advantageous to give a name to half the coefficient of each cross product term than it is to give a name to the entire coefficient of the simplified combined cross product terms. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but before we do the matrix notation, let's also look at a quadratic form on R cubed. Here's a general quadratic form on R cubed. We have, of course, three variables, x1, x2, and x3. And the first three terms are the squared terms with those variables. Then we have the three cross product terms, x1, x2, x1, x3, and x2, x3. Again, in each case, the coefficients are written with factors of two, so we're actually giving names to half of the coefficient. 2a4 is the whole coefficient, and half of that is just a4. 2a5 is the whole coefficient of this term, and half of that is just a5. Now let's take a look at the matrix notation to see why these twos are advantageous. Here's the general quadratic form on R squared written in matrix notation. Of course, we need a vector with our variables, x1 and x2, but we also need its transpose in row form so that they can get multiplied together, producing those squared quadratic terms. In the middle, we have the matrix that is typically labeled A, which produces our coefficients. In our matrix of coefficients, note that it's the coefficients of the squared terms which appear on the diagonal, A1 and A2. On the other hand, off the diagonal, we have half the coefficient of the cross product terms. 2a3 is the coefficient of the cross product term, so off the diagonal, we have a3 and a3. And we'll go into more detail on how to construct this matrix properly after this example. Calling that matrix with coefficients A, we can write this in the more condensed form x transpose times A times x. Of course, x is our variable vector. Then it's worth actually doing this multiplication to see that it produces the quadratic form desired, beginning with x transpose times A. 
we match this row with this column and get a1x1 plus a3x2. Then this row with this column and we get a3x1 plus a2x2. Then we just have this single row with this single column. That gives us a1x1 squared plus a3x2x1. That's from that first term. And then we have a3x1x2 plus a2x2 squared. That's from the second term. Note, when we did that multiplication, this whole sum got hit by the x1, and this whole sum got hit by the x2. Then you see that we can combine like terms, because we have a3x2x1 and a3x1x2. Now you see the advantage of writing that factor of 2 into our general form. It allows us to name half the coefficient, a3, so that at this step, we have a3 and a3 instead of a3 over 2 and a3 over 2. Similarly, in our matrix, we're able to just put a3. We don't have to deal with any fractions. So once we combine those like terms, we get the quadratic form expected, a1x1 squared plus a2x2 squared plus 2a3 x1, x2. Now looking back at this coefficient matrix, how did we know that this matrix is what would work to produce our quadratic form? Well, again, it's the coefficients of the square terms that are on the diagonal. And in this case, it's a little hard to see because there's only one cross product term. But off the diagonal, the positions of these entries tell us the cross product terms they correspond to. So if we label our variables like this with just enumerative subscripts, this is really easy. So for example, this entry here is in row one, column two. So it should be the coefficient of x1, x2, which is a3. Meanwhile, this entry is in row two, column one. So it should be the coefficient of x2, x1. When we combine those, since they're really the same variable part, we get 2a3 x1 x2. Let's look at the quadratic form on r cubed to see a bigger example. Here's the general quadratic form on r cubed, and here it is written in matrix form, which of course we could also write as x transpose a x. Now our variable vector has three variables, enumerated x1, x2, and x3. For our coefficient matrix, again, it's pretty straightforward to construct. The diagonal contains the coefficients of the squared terms, a1, a2, and a3. Off the diagonal, we can use the position of each entry to determine which coefficient it should be. For example, this entry is in row 1 and column 2, so it should be the coefficient of x1 x2. And we see that's a4. Of course, we also have the coefficient there of x2, x1. Once we combine those, that's why we get 2a4, x1, x2. This entry here is in row 2, column 3, so it should be the coefficient of x2, x3. And you can see that there. x2, x3 has that a6 coefficient. Of course, we also have this coefficient, which corresponds to the product x3, x2, and once we combine those together, we get 2a6, x2, x3. So that's how to construct this coefficient matrix properly. You're welcome to do this computation out and verify that it works as we did in the previous example, but we're going to do a 3x3 three three example with actual numbers in a minute. As we can see, the gist of this coefficient matrix is that the matrix A corresponding to a quadratic form in Rn is an n by n symmetric matrix with the coefficients of the squared terms on the diagonal and half the coefficients of the cross product terms off the diagonal. And so we see how each symmetric n by n matrix has an associated quadratic form. We say that the function qa of x equals x transpose ax is the quadratic form associated with a. We could also write this in dot product notation. x transpose times a times x could be written as x dot ax or ax dot X. There's also a special case worth mentioning. Like we said, each symmetric n by n matrix A has an associated quadratic form. So if A is diagonal, 
then the off-diagonal terms are zero, and those are the coefficients of the cross products of the corresponding quadratic form. So for a diagonal matrix, the quadratic form has no cross product terms. In particular, if the diagonal matrix A has diagonal entries lambda 1 through lambda n, then the associated quadratic form looks like this. Lambda 1 x1 squared plus lambda 2 x2 squared plus lambda 3 x3 squared and so on up to lambda n xn squared for a quadratic form in Rn. Let's finish with a couple of examples. We want to express each quadratic form in matrix notation. This first one is a quadratic form in R squared. We can see that because there are two variables, x and y. Hence, in matrix notation, it will have to look something like this. We've got our variable vector x, and we've got its transpose, and we have the coefficient matrix in the middle, which is really all we have to figure out. The diagonal terms are easy. Those just need to be the coefficients of the squared terms of the quadratic form. So in this case, 4 and 5, the coefficients of x squared and y squared. Off the diagonal, the entries should be half the coefficient of the cross product terms. The only cross product term is xy, which has a coefficient of negative 8. So this off diagonal entry is negative 4, and this one is negative 4 as well. That's half of negative 8. Now, if we did the multiplication out, we would get negative 4xy and negative 4yx, which could be combined to negative 8xy. Actually, doing the multiplication to verify our answer, this times this is this, and then we just have to multiply this by this, which gives us this, which can be simplified to this. Verifying our answer is correct. We're going to finish with this second example. We have a quadratic form in R cubed, so we have three variables, x, y, and z. So we can get started like this. We've got our variable vector and its transpose, x, y, z, x, y, z. Now let's worry about those coefficients. The diagonal needs to contain the coefficients of the square terms. 3 is the coefficient of x squared. Negative 5 is the coefficient of y squared. And 6 is the coefficient of z squared. Off the diagonal, we need to have half the coefficients of the cross product terms. The first cross product term is 4xy, so this entry needs to be 2. And since we know that this matrix will be symmetric, we can also just reflect this over and say that is 2 as well. The next cross product term is negative 2xz. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. We can also just reflect that over and get negative 1. And then the last cross product term is 2yz, so we need half of 2, that's 1. Again, this matrix is symmetric, so we can just reflect that to get our last entry of 1. So this is the quadratic form in R cubed in matrix notation. Again, we could do the computation, actually multiply this together, and verify our answer is correct. And there that work is. This times this is this. Then we must multiply this by this. That gets us here, which can be simplified to this, verifying that our answer is correct. So that's an intro to quadratic forms and writing them in matrix notation. There will be much more to say about quadratic forms and what we can do with these throughout the rest of the course. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in the course. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.